let's say if I consider a question here, like take two inputs. Okay. From the user and compare whether they are equal or not. Simple question. Okay, you have to take two inputs from the user and then you have to compare whether they are equal or not. All right, so yeah, write code in the chat box, how you'll make it quickly. So use the methods whatever till now we have done okay we don't have to go for any different such methods just use normal methods anyone quick how you are going to code it This dominant had an power cut. Okay. Trying to reconnect. Let's see if it could. Okay, I'm audible. Yes, sir. Mm, yes. yes, sir. But there was a power cut. Okay, so solve the question. Hmm. I guess so, you might have solved. You particularly have to take two inputs from the user and then just you have to compare it whether they are equal or not. So yeah, the code, what you'll be writing it. Tell. Okay. Just speak out like how you'll be making it. Anyone? So we would be taking the variable input one equals to input. Enter the first two uh, input. Enter the first number or whatever the input. Then we will take the second input in the same way, and then we'll compare if a a equal equal to b or a not equal to b. We'll print uh, those. Okay. So. Uh, will you apply if there? No, sir. We can just write print in brackets a equal equal to b. Yeah, exactly. Correct. So basically, we'd be using a normal method, right? So there, what we can do is that is your let's say a. What you said. Let's go with that. It's quite easy. And exactly the same way, right? So, is this? so a equals to end of input, then you'll be taking enter number 
now let it be anything whatever it must be again an input it will be again a number all right and um, then you would be printing whether this a is equal equals to b or not right one would satisfy whether the things are equal right let's say four and five are the number then it's not equal easy all right now now uh, let's see an operator then we'll go to the next question okay. let's see we are learning now relational operators now these are of three kinds okay we have read in class 12 also this one that is your and or and not okay and these are used particularly between the conditions okay so sometimes they are also called as conditional operators all right okay so let's say for example if we consider the first one and now this operator you have to use when when you think that both the conditions and then on the left and the right side what you are applying should be true understood like if i'm saying if there are two conditions so both the condition should be true only then you are going to apply this and if not then possibly you will not be getting the correct result or the true result what you are expecting for so and should be applied only on a true conditions and why it is to be applied only on true conditions to get results right so they have their truth table right how it goes see so that will be your true and your true will be giving you a result of true obviously okay your true and false will be giving you a result so these operators are logical yeah you can say this logical operators basically okay. they, they have some relations between the two conditions so sometimes they are called as conditional operator relational operators logical operators okay you can name it that too on to main logical you can have this okay so true and true true and false false and true and false and false so see only when the conditions are true on both on the sides you're going to get a true result otherwise every next condition will be giving you a false answer right now this can be also solved with 1 and 0 0 and 0 okay let's take 1 and 0 or 1 and 1 first of all true and true okay 1 and 0 0 and 1 and 0 and 0 clear now here also 1 and 1 is 1 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 clear similarly there is again the next one that is your or now this gives you true okay let's say here we will consider false okay now this gives you false only when this give you false only when both situations are false let's see how so true or false
Das dann immer. Hmm. Okay. So true or false? False or true? False or false? And true or true? So all the situation gives you only when you are having false or false you are going to get false otherwise every situation is going to give you true. Clear? Any queries here? No? Okay. Next. So this can also be solved using 1 and 0. 0 and 0. Or you can say it has to be one or one or zero or one. Any up so only zero and zero is going to give you the possible false results. Okay. Otherwise it is always correct like this. Okay. Alright. So uh, let's take a situation here now. And uh, let's frame a question, get the results easily. So let's say that I want to take three inputs. Is this? Yeah. So take three inputs from the user. And we have to compare whether any of them are equal or not. Okay. Write your answers quickly in the chat box. All right, quickly. Solve this, write the answer in the chat box, quick. Any answers out there? No. Any answers? No, not still. Quickly, write something. Whatever you think, how to solve it. I see some results from one chick. Okay. Uh, enter A. Enter A equals B. B equals C. Any different method? Any else? What we can try? Uh, so we can use the and conditions. Right? Yeah. That, or conditions. Are... That's exactly what I'm saying. Is if we use and, how we are going to write it? To find that if any of them are equal or not. So we will use the OR operator like A equal equal to B or B equal equal to C or A equal equal to C. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, let me write. All right, so if I'm taking a b, I have to think that itself where it is. Yeah. All right. So this is the number. Let's say a b and c. Now, what we have to check is whether any of the numbers are equal or not. So, let's say any number will be equals to, right, like A equal equals B. What the noise are coming from? A equal equals to B or B equal equals to C. Or you can use c equal equals to a so that will be giving us particularly like with any of the numbers are equal to them or not okay and we'll printing it let's say any number are equal if yes then we have to like write then which of them are equal any numbers are equal or like okay uh, it will raise another the noise coming up in three four five so no numbers are equal, all right, two, three, two. And here it gets, says that numbers are equal, okay. Then in the next like conditional, when you go to conditional things, then there itself you can apply that, uh, yeah, that uh, if these numbers are equal, then what exactly, you know, uh, then to print which numbers are equal particularly, okay, like that, all right. So getting there. Now, okay, let's say that there is a uh, passing marks for any number like 35.0 something, okay. So, you want to take some input from the user, okay, and then return you know, uh, the next positive number. Like, let's say if a student has scored 35.0, 35.5. Uh, okay, another score. Let's say score two, score one is equals to thirty five point six. All right. You want to give the score in an integer format. Let's say when you have numbers in float and you want to convert it in integer. Very simple thing. You have just write int and then you will be getting it right. But what if if we want that thirty five point four to get it up to thirty five? And 35.6 to get it up to 36 right that is something like which will be round round off okay so what we can use in that situation in these kind of situations what we, we are going to use is called as round function okay that we say it is to be round off however this is there in the math module but uh, still you can have this here and you have to write the round function of score 1 so I'll just return the round figure and round function of score 2 so it's 35 and 36 very simple clear to everyone yes no guys yes sir yes sir that's clear okay, okay. Now let's say when we say something like we need to you know uh, find the square root of any number, all right? When you say it like that, so the square root. What does a square root of a number says? What it just describes? Something x to like if you say x square. What is that? Square root like under root of x. What it defines? Is it something like this? sounds are coming today you guys are also listening that sound are you getting affected with that any buzzing sounds it's nearby something is going up there okay so in both simply uh, yeah all right hmm. so let's say i'm saying that 
QRT of X nothing would be quite a problem. Uh, if it runs, yeah, that gives an equals to okay. Gives, yeah, all right. Hmm. What is that keyword? Uh, simplify of solve equals to false. Is not All right. Okay. Let me let's leave it. Just have a look over here. That if I write even a point five, that is fine, right? You are it's a group out of point. Let's see. Yeah. So under root of x is something like this: x to the power of point five or one by two, what we say. Yes or no? Right. So let's say if I if I say you to find the square root of eight in like mathematical terms. Find the square root of it. How you'll find it? Very simple things like what you'll do is under root of 8 is here, it means like a square root of 8. It is here square root of 8, which will be 2 root 2, obviously, right? But to represent like for getting up the values in numerical terms, numerical terms obviously will be getting it. What we need to do is we need to find 8 to the power of 0.5 or 8 to the power of 1 by 2 possibly like this right or then when you go with something mathematics then you have to use math module so let's say for square roots you'll be using <coughs> sorry math dot sqrt of let's say if it is 8 you'll find the square root of 8 that see complete results are same right 2.828 and all right but when you need it in like graphical sorry uh, in symbolic forms you'll be using it something package of simple it's not in your course right now but still i'm just making it look how it looks like okay all right next let's say if now these are something where you can easily take uh, inputs from the user uh, that can be an integer that can be in float values and then you can find it very in a very simple way okay right but what if if is a complex number if you need to find the root of a complex number Okay, then we will be using a package called as CMath. Okay, now let's say uh, input from a number user. Let's take, I'll be taking uh, user input. So now I'll be evaluating the things. Okay, and put the function input there. All right. Okay, square root you can just print it higher in a way. SQRT is going to be so you can just write C math dot SQRT of the number. That's it. We'll be getting the number square root. Okay, so let's run and let's see if I enter a uh, number 7 plus 8j. I get a square root that is 2.69 point something 018 and all plus this 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 j okay so basically this eval method what you say right this allows you to evaluate arbitrary python expressions always in a string base right so in a string base this allows you to find the things and inside this function like if you want to learn about what are there are in the C math function you can just have a look over there like this and you can find like sine square root tan and all like with the math module 
similar to that but with arbitrary functions over there okay let me see the chat box what is that power okay power function for that uh, x to the power of y right okay hmm. and uh, what do you ask difference between bitwise and logical all right see uh, logical and operator works on boolean expressions okay and whenever you use it you are going to get only of the boolean values 0 1 true false okay and bitwise and operator when you talk about the bitwise and operator works on integer formats okay short integers long unassigned integers okay and that returns you similar that kind of data itself when you apply boolean one you'll be getting boolean results when you apply logical ones you'll be getting logical ones one zero right when you apply boolean you get true and false never you are going to get your uh, one and zero over there okay all right uh, yeah. moving next right, i guess that is clear now if you want to find you know like solutions for quadratic equations all right how to find that let's say if there is an equation for example right a x square let's just frame it right a x square plus b x plus c let's say this is an equation like this okay and this is equals to zero this is equals to zero now if we want to find solutions for this quadratic equations how you will find what is that solution you might have read in class 8 9 10th right similar very easy things what will be the solution for this anyone who remember the formulas yeah okay let's say solution one if we talk about what what is the solution one right two solutions should be there for a quadratic equation how you will obtain the solution one anyone who remembers the formula okay if i say to find discriminant yeah if anyone remembers discriminant values now let's write discriminant okay how to find discriminant? Write your b square minus your four ac. Good, very good. This would be our discriminant value, right? Okay. So, what would be the solutions then? So solution one would become your minus b or like let's say it, it is a quadratic equations right so arbitrary functions arbitrary expressions would be there again okay so what we are going to do is your results will be there in minus and positive in both the things right so we'll be using a square root or i'll be using complex mathematics over there c math right so let's say minus b of minus c math dot sqrt let's say of this discriminant value like whatever the discriminant would be d would be there okay and this would be divided by 2a isn't it something like this what you calculate uh, let me have this division there like this okay this would be the solve one similar your so let me write solve one it get printed something what is it I can't convert expressions to float okay it's a problem sqrt of this all right okay right now it shows my issues 
let's say salt two is equals to this. And here we'll be using plus minus b plus c bar square root of the discriminant value divided by your 2a okay now let's say this is being done okay these are the uh, okay okay it's an error as such because no such no values has been given so it's causing an error no need to worry so similarly if we take values regarding r q s three inputs as in the evaluation methods if we take it there where is that eval yeah here in a similar way if we take it from here let's say my r is equals to this this is going to be the r the first okay then copy paste let's say this is s and let's say this is t okay so equation will be now r you know r x square plus your s x plus t right understand replacing things just okay so we'll be taking all these as the input and then here all discriminant value would be easily solved right how that would be your here what is a b that is your s square minus your values of 4 r t isn't it clear having doubts here and here our solutions would be minus b that is your minus s minus b minus s square root of this d whatever the uh, results would be coming up there and divided by r is it clear to everyone whatever we have done here till now see this this one clear so can you please call it a little upwards yeah sure okay now we'll be printing solution one or let's say solution r <coughs> sorry solve one then solve two all right now well, let's see what it comes so we need to find we need to give values for you know like uh, your uh, a b c or you can say your r s t let's run it let's see if we give two four and six any errors yeah. solve two is not defined then what okay this is not defined. two four and six so we are getting some complex results here yeah, that is minus one minus of this minus one plus of this these are the results now so what is basically rst so the this gives 2 4 and 6 so equation is particularly 2x square plus uh, what is it then 4s plus t let's say right or plus 6 this is the equation 2x square plus 4x plus 6 and this is giving the result equals to 0. We need to solve this uh, equation. So let's say this is my expression 1. So if we need to solve it, just using some uh, quick methods to get it solved. And these are the results. What exactly we have found here, right? See, minus 1 minus square root of uh, i like iota with the square root of there see minus 1 minus square root of this and see that j is there in complex forms and here also minus 1 plus a square root of that 2 and it's uh, definitely 1.41 which is the square root of 2 and this in the format so if i just uh, write it to get an expression way so this is like minus 2i minus 1 and the other one will be the positive one which is minus 2i sorry under root of 2i minus 1 is it clear to everyone see exactly the same results you are getting here but that is a numerical format and this is an expressive format right and uh, no like computation symbolic formats you can say all. so both the formats i have just printed to have a comparison that it's getting 
uh, if you don't understand the way how it is written you can understand in this better way okay so see this is minus 1 right this is your minus 1 and then minus of see minus of 1.414 this is square root of 2 okay and this j is iota right over there this is i again minus 1 so minus 2 root of 5 minus 1 and then similarly this 2 root of 5 plus minus 1 everyone is clear with this this is a function of solve all right this is used in, like to uh, solve your mathematical terms like whatever the equations you are having uh, quadratic equations algebraic expressions you can use solve but that comes in the module of simply okay so whenever you require you have to write up these three lines what i have written previously that import simply from simply uh, just a minute yeah we need to import everything and from simply dot abc which is nothing but uh, importing the expressions you have to import everything just you have to write and run and then uh, okay just a minute let me get it copy and paste in your chat box so that you can take it from here and paste in your machines okay so uh, that you have to do and then you can get the solutions are very clear right okay with everyone having doubts <coughs> uh, sir i was parallelly doing this but uh, the equation commands are showing some error errors can you show me your screen? Yes, sure. Yeah, please. Hmm. So here it is. Hmm. Just a minute, let me have a look. Import simply from simply input star. Yeah, okay, scroll down. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> just bit upwards. Okay. Alright, this is fine. Yeah, yes, stop, stop. Equation x square plus bx plus c plus bx plus c. Yeah, come down. Boolean atom not allowed in the context. Have you defined ABC previously anything? No, sir. Okay, uh, just do one thing. Just go above. Okay, uh, you do one thing. Paste here the codes of import simply and from the chat box, take it there and paste directly here. Yeah, this lines. Oh. Paste it once. Sir. Run it. Okay. Uh, second one, the downloads one, run that. And sir, I guess here is the problem too because your outputs and mine were, are not same. X you have defined, yeah. X, X you have defined somewhere, might be. So that's giving you just a uh, output. That's the root of X is equal to 6 to. There you can write X dot power of 5.5. You can use power function. Someone has also written there in the chat box. Who is that? Yeah, Ani K Sagar. Okay, so power function you can use. Okay. And so here, so I need to import it every no, time. No, no, no. You don't use... need to import it every time. Uh, once it is like uh, once you have defined something and then you are using. Once you get a boolean result, then you have to import it because after getting boolean results, they are undefined then. Okay. So when you define anything, make sure like if you are uh, taking an expression like x equals two. Let it be x1, okay. let it be x2, don't write x. When we are using a symbolic terms, then let, let it be x and all. But when you are not using symbolic, then you can use x1, x2, x3. Okay, to avoid these kind of errors. Focus on. All right. Yeah, that's okay. Can you see the screen? Everyone is okay with the screen? Yeah. Yes, yes sir. Mm. Good. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to see assignment operators.
then assignment operator what happens let's say that uh, yesterday we did string concatenation okay replications concatenations we did so what we saw there like if there is a word let's say it is ice so if i want to add cream to it i'll be using plus equals giving a space cream and would be printing the word would be ice cream simple right so what you did there that word plus equals to what it means yesterday we look on right what is what is that that was word is equals to you are adding word plus the cream isn't it whatever the your word would be there what you are doing you are adding this cream with your word and then you are adding this complete thing storing this complete thing inside your word again right so that is exactly what you are doing this plus and equals to this whole line we what we do is we just uh, make it short and and we make it like plus equals to and then you write whatever it is okay so just removing this word and uh, just changing the places like plus will be here equals to will be here that's it okay right so this is the thing this is nothing but assignment only concatenation here in the string we say but this is an assignment operator plus equals to so let's say like x x1 is equals to 5 if i say x1 plus 5 x1 plus equals to 5 then x1 values would be yeah anyone what will be the value of x1 10 hmm It would be 10. All right. Now, similarly, remember the arithmetic operators. We are going to apply that itself. Okay. Let's say x1 multiply equals to 5. What would the value? So 50. Mm -hmm. 50. Correct. Okay. Why? Because now x1 is 10. And it will be multiplied by 5 to get to 50 itself. You might be get confused like 5 into 5 would be 25 or it should be 50. Right? So x1 value is 10 and it is being multiplied by 5 will be giving you 50. Now x1 is 50. Now if I say that this is to be div uh, divided by uh, 5. Again it will be giving you 10.0. Now if I say this x1 to you know like this similarly like when it is divided by 3. What's the remainder? It's 1.0. Okay, these are, are your assignment operators, how it is going to work. So plus equals, uh, negative equals, multiplication, divisions, whatever the arithmetic operators you have made it. Just add an equals to sign with that. That's it. Okay, uh, next. Now uh, let's have an identity operators. Now, understanding identity is very easy. Let's say that there is a word called as intelligence. So, is there any E? Intelligence is a word which is having several uh, different letters, right? If you find the length of this, what would be the length? I guess 10, 12, okay, fine, 10, 12 is there, okay? Now, if in this word I want to find that is there any G or not? So I'll write it that G is there in intelligence or not? Searching, that's it, very simple. It says true. Let's say that there are some usernames. Okay, let's say all these are there, right? Suddenly what happens, so a new user is coming and trying to uh, like log in in some respective respective areas. So let's say user has been an input. And 
and enter username very simple okay let's run it let's say he has taken this this and this now this is a username okay this is a username and what you have to do is you have to identify whether uh, first you have to identify right that whether this username is there in your uh, storage or not or these kind of usernames are there uh, in or not right so what you will do is user in usernames false it's not there right so obviously i'm not going to give you will be raising error at username dot found right very simple all right okay so similarly let's have a good example with their name so similarly with this if we say that there are some of the files methods pdf txt csv okay and suddenly you took any of the file different like the, let it be jpg so jpg is not supported in the files why because it is not there so if we say that jpg or gif so gif is not there in the files that is a true statement so here we can use it in this way okay oops membership operators name it as okay identities would be like is and is not now that would be used to compare the objects whether those are in the same memory locations or not okay memory locations you know every uh, particular thing has its own memory location so that will be used to you know to find out the memory locations to you know like to compare to uh, search for whether they are exactly in that location or not and that could be done like using of identity operators so let's write it here identity operators okay so they are of two kinds right so the very first thing is to understand how to find the location first of all right how to uh, get the location of any such uh, variable all right so let's say files files is having any memory location how you'll find it id of this files very simple this is the id of files you can get it from there right so is and is not are there to get it easily done right now there are several ways to get something printed okay so let's see the ways of getting printing so what are the ways of getting printed the things let's say my values just for a minute So uh, let's say that if the values of x1, x2 I'm taking here, x1 equals 4, x2 equals 5. If these are the values of x1 and x2. I want to print it in several ways. How can I? x1 is equals to this and x2 is equals to this. And that should be inside a string, guys. Okay. Always inside the strings. So x1 is equals to this, x2 is equals to this. Just give a gap, or if you don't want, you cannot write. So give a dot and write format. So these are the ways of formatting, basically. So x1 is equals to the value of x1, and value of x2 would be x2. Run it, x1 equals 4 and x2 equals 5. The next similar way, x1 is equals to person D. So don't give percent for two times now. 
right? What you have to do is percent D and percent D is there. So percent D values x1 and x2. That's very simple. x1 equals 4 and x2 equals 5. Again, okay. The ways. Now percent D is used for integer formats, right? When you are having, uh, when you want to make it in float, you can write float like this and here. Okay. Right. Or if you want in string format, you can write it in S like this. See. All right. Getting things. Or else you have very easy option. The basic one x equals to x and y equals to y oh sorry x1 and y1 that one is not defined x2 is there okay So x1 so equals to this, x2, yeah. Mm -hmm. Say, say. No, sir, please. Okay. So x1 equals 4 and x2 equals 5. So you have seen, right, how the ways are of getting anything printed. So whenever you want to print anything, you have several ways to get it printed. Or you can use an STR format for writing uh, plus and then printing up the things there okay so all these other ways guys uh, how you would be making your things okay any doubts whatever we did today okay now uh, yesterday we looked on to a calendar module if you remember now if you want to check whether any year is having a leap year or not or uh, like let's for 2021 if you looked on look that uh, is this a leap year or not i'll identify we'll be writing that calendar dot is a leap year which year 2021 so this is not a leap year right so uh, whether 2000 was a leap year or not calendar dot is a leap year 2000 yeah it was okay how many leap days are there between 2000 to 2020 if we need to find like that, how many leap days are there? So between 2000 to 2020, 5. All right. Similarly, there are a lot of, you know, uh, functions for this calendar module where you can go and, you know, check things per month, okay, per week, how many, set your first week day. Like setting means like when you are printing any calendar of any month, right? It's a very simple way. You need to print it. Okay. Uh, now here you have to use print because your printing will be done inside the string format. So if you don't use string, you'll be getting a new line. How? Let's say this is like this is. If I use slash n is a new line. So slash n is a. Now what will happen? This is after this is slash n gives you new line. So this is a new line, right? So. If you do only print calendar dot of a month, let's say uh, year is 2021, this, if you're printing at this, in this way, what do you see is this February and all these things inside this. Okay. So this is nothing but when you write this in, in a uh, string format, you'll be getting the printing like this. Okay. So these are arranged in such a way that you'll be getting in prints like this. February, then gaps, and then see. So if your month is starting from Monday, if you want to set the another weekday, so all the respective things are there, okay? Week, first week, weekday, uh, respective things, month range, okay? Any doubts? Whatever we did today, let me stop your recording.